why should watch brands listen to enthusiasts? This can be addressed from both sides of the fence. Do they not know best, being the owners of the brand, the manufacturers, or are they so close to their products that they aren't necessarily looking far enough? And this is where we, the enthusiasts, come in. Over the last 10 years, we have seen quite the monumental shift in how watch content is consumed. First began on places like forums and message boards where enthusiasts would reach out to each other and keep in contact, keep themselves in the loop about what was changing, where the attention was, able to share this passion amongst each other, and it was still at that stage a very small portion of the community. If we think just purely based on numbers, only the true enthusiasts would be able to know that these platforms existed, and many didn't. The next real shift occurred when blogs like A Blog to Watch, Hodinky, arrived on the scene and shook up how we interpreted media and how watch news was delivered to us. At this stage, where the internet was now a lot further reaching, so these platforms were able to reach a wider audience. Collectively, you're not only speaking now to the enthusiast, but to many more people in the community. And I would say that over the last five years, social media like Instagram and this platform now, YouTube, have become just as important as places for the community to share their founded knowledge, get messages, get reviews, get thought pieces out about what makes these things so special. We are seeing year by year that the enthusiast base is growing. Watch collecting and the enthusiasm that comes with it is becoming a very popular thing. Now to those who enjoyed the early days on forums and other networks like that, this feels like the hobby is becoming a lot more mainstream. But whether we like it or not, the enthusiast now has a much louder voice. And this means then that we have a form of influence. So what does this mean then for the watch brands themselves? We have noticed a similar shift in some of these directions. Some have adapted to these changes very well. They are now using social platforms a lot more. They are including the watch enthusiasts, the prospective watch buyers, in the process, showing off how their products are made, what makes them special next to their competition. I think now, more than ever before, we are getting much more of an intimate look into how the companies manage their products, and that's a great thing. The more they share, the more you will be interested in wanting to buy their brand. To circle back to that first part of the question about why brands should listen to enthusiasts, I mean, do they really have to? That's a question I pose to all of you. They are the ones in control at the end of the day. They are the ones that make the final decisions. Just because a couple hundred or maybe a thousand people clamor for a certain product, does this mean then that they have to follow suit? That can be a point that we as a community can elaborate on. In a moment, we will be analyzing five watch brands and how they have shifted their identities. But the underlying theme, I think, tied to all of this is that the watch enthusiast now especially has their fingers on the pulse. Using social platforms to their advantage, they're able to learn where the trends are going. For a diehard enthusiast that is fully dedicated to a specific watch brand, surely they have some insight that they can share. They could help shift the direction of where the brand is going in such a way that they become more in demand. Because the truth is, if we just eliminate products and services, there is a lot of passion in this hobby of ours. There are many other factors to this, but what I'm trying to say is that the enthusiast can do a lot more than stand outside of a watch brand with a placard in their hands complaining about certain things. We can instead help the brand, and for the brands themselves it's easy marketing. There is no better PR than getting public testimonials, acclaim and appreciation, owners themselves promoting their watches to other enthusiasts. So to analyze a few of these brands we can see how they have changed. Breitling, for example, under a new CEO is reinvigorating how the brand is seen. Simple things like how the logo has been changed. The brand doesn't solely want to be seen as an aviation watch. Instead, it wants to cover land, air, and sea. Breitling is doing a lot more collaborations with partners, cross-pollinating their brands and their designs together. They are investing a lot more of their energy and time into injecting fun into the brand a lot more. We are seeing this resurgence of 80s aesthetics with the reintroduction of the bullet bracelet, an understanding of size and proportions, a nice blend of watches that are actually focusing on unisex options. The easiest way we could interpret this change is that they are streamlining their product line. And that is down to passion. A stronger focus on where the brand originated, what made it identifiable, returning to form. And I believe that the enthusiast had a part to play in this process. Omega next. Now if there's one manufacturer out there that really appreciates enthusiast feedback, it's this brand. They have managed to create this great symbiosis by how they are incorporating not only modern aesthetics, but also looking back 
to their past models, creating an entirely new reissue category. In order to do this successfully, they have taken feedback to heart, going so far to recreate original movements, the same sized cases. On the other end of the spectrum, they're also listening and trying to cater to the modern audience, those who want to see the brand develop, doing simple things like improving their chronometer ratings, adjusting the aesthetics of the watches, making them more balanced, utilizing colors, and now especially we are seeing how they are trying to fuse the DNA of the reissue and the modern watch together. Whether or not that will be successful, who knows, but it shows that the brand is trying to please the audience, and in turn make a compelling product. Without question, Tudor as a brand has seen the most growth over the last eight years. They have had their finger on the pulse when it comes to understanding trends and where the true interest lies in the watches that they are trying to make. This brand always manages to adapt and change to how the audience wants it to be seen. I think in part it is due to how well integrated they are in social media. They look at the most in-demand designs. They look at the people who are trying to promote them. They find this perfect meeting point of understanding that size, proportions, presence, all plays a role into the overall package of their watches. And just recently, we have seen how they are now going in an even further direction, using Meta's certified movements, newer technologies. We could say the downside to this brand is that it plays it safe. Not really something that lines up with the moniker of Born to Dare. But the progression is gradual. In this area, at least, one of the most domineering factors that makes this brand successful is the enthusiast's influence. We look at Seiko and how their enthusiast platform grows day by day. People love these watches because they are affordable, they are egalitarian, they have a great history around them and offer many opportunities for the enthusiast to modify them. But where this brand is going now, we are seeing they are modernizing their identity by using methods like incorporating the prospect's name and that hallmark into a lot more of their watches which in turn drives up their price, which means then that their quality control has to be better and is also drawing in a lot more attention from those who may never have looked at Seiko as a brand before. This is a really good thing. It's a brand that is now trying to compete with names that are in a much higher tier when you're looking at prices and those factors. But this also is a company that is very enthusiast driven. And we could say that Seiko as a brand understands their identity more than any other does. They know their history, they know their designs, they know exactly where the love for these models stem from. And with many additions that they bring out, they very much aim it to the enthusiast. The enthusiast then spreads the word and it becomes more and more popular. And the last name that I listed with these examples is Rolex. Believe it or not, I have this feeling that the enthusiast is starting to make a mark, at least some kind of impact. Unfortunately, a lot of these enthusiasts will never get their hands on these models, but we are seeing a change in how the brand addresses a lot of their models. One of the latest, the most recent examples, the Submariner 41 and the Explorer 36, these two models were exactly what the community wanted. Of course, I'm generalizing, but subconsciously, a lot of us wanted to see these changes and really did not expect them to be introduced. This is not going to be the last time, but the final result shows that there is even more attention driven to the brand. So even here, in a category of brands that we could swear never listen to feedback, it's hard to deny that the brand didn't at least take some of this information in, reconsider that maybe their earlier judgments weren't the most ideal, and that they in fact had to look a bit deeper into their past, or maybe just understand their product a little bit more. Over the next few years, I believe that the enthusiast is going to continue to push this method of trying to promote brands and their best watches. As we know in this community, this day and age, we have to adapt and look to see where new opportunities might rear their heads. And if watch brands don't do the same, they will be left behind. The beauty is that the enthusiast is almost a litmus test for any watch brand to gauge whether or not their product will be successful. It's a pretty good idea to run it through the enthusiast first. They can provide criticism and feedback that could be very helpful. In my mind at least, as a part of any design process, feedback is important. You want to see how the user appreciates your product. And really, there is no better feedback, whether it is harsh or whether it is supportive, that the enthusiast can give you because they want your brand to succeed. And given the right opportunity, they can very much drive your name to success.